What's going on guys? Dr. Root7 signing in back with another video. A couple of days back, I just posted a picture on my community feed that I got this amazing thing for just $10. So I told you guys that I'll be sharing with you all my experience regarding this device. So what exactly is this? This is a multi-emulation device which is capable of streaming 4K output on all the retro games that it supports. This device is dependent on software emulation, so expect a little bit of lag certain games for certain platforms so I'll be getting into the platforms in a bit let's see what we have here in the box it says professional game chip connect to TV so this is completely dependent on television so you have to connect this onto your TVs classic games and double rocker control maybe they're referring to rumble pads let's check the contents out product features double handheld it meant by two players support 40 simulators simulators I guess that's what they are referring to emulators 40 different platforms I don't even know if we have 40 different platforms but that sounds like a stretch open source system and dual players okay original 3d rocker special game rocker for arcade high sensitivity and anti-skid design I guess that's what they are referring to the joypad designs and the rumble feature tv hd output support hdmi connection to tv game synchronization operation supports 40 simulator goddamn simulator format games compatible with more than 10,000 games and can do download games by yourself so you have the ability to add in games as well i will show you guys how to do that we'll take a full dive into this device and see what it's capable of delivering because this entire thing costs around 60 to 70 dollars if you're trying to buy it and i just got it literally for free i just had to spend 10 dollars on it got it off a liquidation sales store i was visiting a friend of mine and i just stepped in and found one of these laying so i'm like you know let's pick it up support multi media function listen to music watch video i don't know how they're gonna how we'd be able to do that or if we would want to do that but it's an added feature why not specification parameter operating system it runs on linux based environment and uses retroarch to emulate the system so expect a bit of lags because retroarch itself is not perfect even when you're trying to run it on different systems specifically for this on this device which is like uses i don't know what kind of hardware emulator mame which is the arcade emulator fc means famicom or the nintendo 8-bit game boy game boy advance game boy color mega drive sfc super famicom super nintendo widely known in the europe or u.s territories playstation 1 atari 2600 atari 7800 hmm doesn't count to 40 but uh, okay i'm kind of surprised that they haven't included the playstation portable emulation however we'll check it out because they only name a few of them so yeah there could be more the cpu is gb2 i don't know what is that sd ram is ddr3 20 256 mb and flash memory is 128 mb okay let's open it up and we'll check it out and see what's inside the box the first thing that we have are the joy pads we got two of them it comes with cables HDMI extender a data cable oh I just flung that oh yeah this is the Bluetooth adapter since these are wireless and behold the device itself man such a small bar looking device I'm kind of very much interested to see what this small device is capable of doing because to be quite honest this doesn't even have a power source I've checked some of the some of the advertisements they say that you don't even need a power source that's all we have inside the box so I'm just gonna put it away all right let's talk about the joy pads now the joy pads are very light they don't feel like a super cheap a little bit tacky you know once you press the buttons they feel super tight and not frail in any way even the l3 and r3 buttons everything feels good build quality i would say that it's it's okay-ish what can you expect from i'm pretty sure this is made in china let's check it out yeah it's made in china there are so many multi-emulation devices out there some of them do have better build quality i guess this is just right over there you know and i won't complain just for ten dollars you need triple a batteries to operate them let's try it out if they're gonna work or not on off button it turned on 
it's looking for the bluetooth signal let's see what happens if we no it needs a power source we are also getting power for this it means that both of them passed the quality check don't trust these <laughs> especially for random devices like these the usb cable obviously you need this to connect your device to your pc and do the rom transferring process now onto the device itself it says 128 mb flash memory i don't know if this has an internal memory or not because i do see a memory card slot 64 gigabytes this is where the bluetooth adapter is gonna go in if you take the lid off the hdmi connector is you can use the extender yeah this here is my fire stick a little bit longer than this device and thicker fire stick doesn't comes with a lid this is a very cool added feature you know i like these things to feel complete more complete fire stick needs power through a power adapter how is this gonna work without even using a power source like maybe it just powers up as soon as you connect it to the tv it pulls the power from the tv this is what came inside the box uh, so we're going to test all the emulators and see how they perform because there are lots of handled emulation multi-emulation device out there like Mio Mini and Burnick so many those are one of the mainstream ones these are just the random ones and they come up so many times on my Facebook advertisements we're going to do all the testings so I'm gonna see you guys on the emulation grounds let's connect this device so the micro SD card just showed up it says ROMs, all of these are separated in different folders. So much for 40 emulators, right? Let's eject this device and we're gonna try it out. We are on the main menu of HBox, that's what it's called. Moment of Truth, what I was suspecting. This device is not just a plug and play device. All of those advertisements that showed that, oh, you do not need a power source, it's just a plug and play. That's not how it works. You do need a power source. That USB cable that I showed you guys at the beginning of the video, that's the power source. So, so you need to connect that USB. Like if you have any USB ports on your multi-plug, you're gonna have to plug that in. These joy pads, they are already pre-assigned for each player. So the red one that you can see is player one. Once you turn on the second joy pad, it's going to turn green, which means player two. Okay now let's talk about the interface the interface looks really bad the interface reminds me of operating systems that are used in those generic nameless chinese mobile phones or mp3 devices that's basically the same interface that you are going to get in this here we have a lot of king of fighter games these are the neo geo roms the arcade emulators you cycle between these options by pressing the l1 and r1 button to be quite honest it's laggy there is latency issues considering that these are wireless only you're going to expect lags when issuing commands that's a general thing regardless of the performance of the emulators so here are the different types of emulators this device is capable of running game boy famicom mame arcade game boy advance game boy color mega drive atari ps1 and super famicom so much for 40 simulators that was a stretch a long long stretch by a light here also you're able to run music and videos yeah i don't think we're going to be doing that you can assign favorites let's just say you enter into one of these emulate systems if you press the r2 button of your joypad you can assign it as favorites history are the games that we have played they will just show up under this tab downloads are these are downloads i'm not even interested in this find is where you can type in the name of the game and they're gonna show up these are settings language you can change the language ketone settings i like this one this is what i've said factory reset you can perform a factory reset and this is the system information it's running the most basic and the most washed down and crude version of emulation and linux environment is just not good in any way so additionally if you want to add in roms they are already uh, separated in the specific folders all you have to do is just get the roms by yourselves and just put them in those specified folders okay let's not waste any more time and check out the first game which should be the most intensive platform it's the playstation one we're gonna run driver two and see how it runs crackling already started i'm going to increase the volume so that you guys can understand what's going on sound and audio qualities are I'm a 
What in the world? Ben Affleck's Batman. This is not good. They use the most shittiest setting in terms of both audio and video. Let's see how the game performance is going to be. I have a very hard feeling they have used the highest frame rate setting. Yeah, it's already fucking laggy. This voice is weird. I mean, I kind of like this voice. All right, let's see how this game is going to perform. Holy shit, it's yeah, it definitely is using frame skip to the highest level. I'm pretty sure they're using 10x frame skip or whatever. It is just holy shit. He's it's skipping like like crazy, man. Like it's on speed. Holy fuck, man. What is going on, bro? Okay. Yeah, I don't know how it's going to be playable, but I don't I in my books this is unplayable. I can't I can't play this. And there is some latency issues going on and yeah, it's just it's it's lagging. It's lagging by a lot. There is like a slight delay which is hindering the performance. If you press the start and select button together, you're going to pull up this menu, the emulation menu, and this is from where you can exit, save, or load state. Let's try one more game. Let's play Pepsi Man. Let's see how Pepsi Man runs. I feel thirsty. This is running okay. This is running well. This is not running too bad but there is a latency issue which is causing that slight delay and is costing a gameplay experience yeah this is not this is not good the wireless feature is not good that was a given 2.4 gigahertz my ass we're done with this this is unplayable i'm not going to classify this emulator as playable let's try out super famicom i'm pretty sure they're just using the most basic settings of the graphic settings they haven't used much of filtering or anything like that. All they did was just, you know, use the lowest of the settings in terms of resolution and everything. Okay, I just died. Um, this is so fucking... This delay is fucking killing me, man. There's, there is a slight delay, man, which is costing performance. these kind of games where you need to be in constant motion this is where you're going to find the latency issue to be a problem okay let's try out atari yeah let's try out dig dug this was one of my most favorite games when i was a kid even dig dug is having performance issues it's not it's not the game game is running fine game is running at a good pace but the latency is what's costing the performance and it's just uh, there you go yeah the latency is a fucking killer man let's try out mega drive and don't let this video quality fool you because it's not pretty what i'm seeing is not nice it's kind of like hazy play this game on other emulators feels like she's walking on ice it's, now this one is working quite okay i would say mega drive is at least playable let's try the game boy color bro why is this zoomed in so much what the fuck this is like zoomed in to the max they decided to zoom this thing out of frames man what the fuck yeah this this is very choppy i i don't like it game boy advance I, at this point i don't even want to try game boy advance uh i'm gonna give my verdict in a little bit once we're done with all the systems it's not looking too good i'm thinking i should have spent that ten dollars on food they're using the most default of the settings also lowered it down to such level that's not the kind of settings you would want 
on your emulator because lower settings doesn't always equate to better performance. Emulation is a mixture of different settings. If you don't know what you're doing, then obviously it's not going to be good. Game Boy, let's try Adventure Island 2. Bro, why are these screens so zoomed in? Like, what the fuck? Why is this? Uh, yeah, there is a choppiness, man. It's so fucking choppy. You know, I'm pretty sure they use the frame skip in all of these emulators and the latency issue, the choppiness is enhancing the choppiness to such levels where it's becoming so annoying to play. All right, let's try Famicom, which is let's try with Super Mario Brothers, where we started everything. Yeah, this this thing, it's not how it should be. It should be interesting. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, at least it started. Surprisingly, the arcade games are running very nicely. I, I'm kind of impressed with they're responding very well. Oh, there's the lag. The gameplay performance is very good on this one. Yeah, arcade emulation is very good. However, the latency issue is there. If the latency issue wasn't a thing, then definitely you would have had a very awesome experience. That's what I wanted to say before I got rudely interrupted because my phone ran out of charge. My verdict on this system, stay the fuck away from this. This is not a way you would want to revisit your childhood memories. 4K game, this device is not 4K. Yeah, 4, I think I said, 4, 4K, fuck off, man. Wireless interface, input lag, my fucking constipated shits. 2.4 gigahertz, my veiny dick. Relieve your experience, my bombastic farts. All the fucking emulators, it's fucking bad. Most of them, except the arcade emulation for some reason was actually good, but still with the latency issue is going to make you wanna throw the joypad on someone's face. This is something that you would wanna throw away and never look back. Playing ET would be a better experience than this. While I had my doubts, I was still thinking maybe it would be able to do something, but um, what's more surprising is they are selling these products for 60, 70, 80 dollars. It's scam. It's a scam. When you're spending 50, 60, 70 dollars in order to revisit a part of your childhood, it's just about nostalgia. This isn't the way to do it. This is like playing with your emotions. And when somebody plays with my emotions, motherfucker, I'ma bust your ass like a firecracker. That's what I'm saying, you know? Software interface is the most shittiest and lamest, washed down, laggy, tacky looking interface I've seen in a while. You see those interfaces on those no name, no fucking, quality cell phones chinese cell phones bombastic ass noises that that the whole neighborhood would be able to listen to once they are turned on or for somebody your buddy is calling you or you receive a message do me a favor if you see one of these somewhere and somebody's trying to approach this box you just slap onto their wrist and tell them no i'm doing you a favor if you're trying to buy this for your loved one or anyone that you care about you're going to give them a very frustrating experience. If you want to gift this to someone you hate or despise, by all means. Otherwise, get the fuck out of my face. You, you can also get the fuck out of my face. And you, you laggy ass motherfucking piece of shit, you also get the fuck out of my face. This, this moment, that $10 should have been better spent on dried prunes, you know? Dried fucking prunes. Man that this was a very bad, bad, bad of an emulation device. One of the most incompatible and frustrating settings that there has to be. Frame skipped to the max. Audio quality has been set to the most choppiest and weirdest way, as if like your cousin has been abducted by this one person who is now asking for a ransom by changing his voice. The lagginess is going to make you want to shove that fucking joypad up someone's ass, pull it out, push it again. Yeah, as advertised, it's nothing of that sort. You leave your childhood memories, get the fuck out of here. If your childhood memory was 
traumatic yes definitely you'd want one of these however that's not how i started or lived my gaming years and that's not how i want to relieve them or revisit them so stay the fuck away from this fucking product if somebody has a different opinion on this just you know Put it sideways like this tell them to gape their ass and then you can just slide it up slide it up you know what i'm saying like fuck off man fuck off